For the man who would someday create one of the largest gold empires on the planet, a political science degree seemed like an unlikely start. I wasn't one of these kids that knew at an early age exactly what they wanted to do. I always wanted to be successful, but I never, I could never see the path. So I took whatever sort of jobs were available for a political science graduate in the late 60s. So I worked as a clerk for a while. I sold life insurance for a while, but then I decided that I wasn't making much progress and that the only way to reboot my life was to go back to school. Ian Telfer entered the University of Ottawa's MBA program at the age of 26. Four years later, he was a financial analyst at Hudson Bay Mining. So in my first job in the resource business at Hudson Bay, I learned what a challenging business it is. Ian had caught the mining bug when he was there with Hudson Bay. He became a gold bug. I mean, I just love it. Gold is different. Gold has a, a, a mythic quality to it. It's been buried with people forever. It's adorned kings and princes. It's been a store of value forever. And I don't think that will ever change. I love gold! Telfer had found his passion and would soon follow it all the way to South America. I was recruited out of Hudson Bay Mining by a group of finance people that were going to form a new company and go to Brazil. It was new, it was a startup, and that whole idea appealed to me, yeah. So that's, if I had an entrepreneurial instinct or feel, that was when it struck. I first met Ian at Rio de Janeiro Airport in 1987. He's passionate about life. He's enthusiastic. He sees ways to get things done. I think most successful miners are dreamers of a sort. That's the underlying quality. Ian is one of them. He doesn't like to say no in a negotiation. I mean, no matter what they put on the table, Ian will say, well, I can do that. So he has this quiet self-confidence that allows him to, it's allowed him to take some very big gambles. In the 90s, Ian gambled on a series of gold mines in Venezuela. As luck would have it, the lands that we had had no gold. And so we ended up with this company that was struggling, struggling, struggling. Two months later, it was bankrupt. <laughs> That's his only failure. What did I learn from that? First, don't fear failure. It's just part of life. It's part of business. And you can always bounce back. The financial markets love a comeback story. So look forward to your comeback. His comeback came in 2001. With gold prices down, Ian raised the money to buy yet another mine, this time in Mexico. Ian's vision was that the gold price was ready to move, and there was a window of opportunity. We went from $10 million to $2.4 billion in a little over three years. He bounced back like it was enervating. It was very exciting. And Ian created it. It came out of nothing. Ian claims to be an opportunist more than a visionary, but I think he's both. Boom. In 2004, Ian was named CEO of global gold giant Goldcorp. Ian was instrumental in building Goldcorp into the third largest mining company in the world. Canadian company built from the ground up, one stone at a time, and we as Canadians should be proud of that. Working with Ian is a pleasure. He's interesting to be with. He's curious. He's traveled to 106 countries. He's phenomenally well-read, really voracious reader, knowledgeable guy. A perfect morning for me is a Wall Street Journal, a Starbucks, a tea time, and a bowel movement. Throughout the years, Ian and his wife Nancy have worked ceaselessly to help shape the city of Vancouver and the country of Canada for future generations. I read somewhere the Gold Corp in the last five years under his influence gave 140 million away. He's, uh, he's got a great social conscience. Ian is very loyal to people and organizations that helped him get where he is. The University of Ottawa gave him an opportunity to get his MBA. 30 years later, he gives $25 million to the University of Ottawa. It was the largest single donation ever made to a Canadian business school. In 2007, the School of Management at the University of Ottawa was renamed. I get a big thrill out of creating something out of nothing. And the reason I like creating operating organizations is to provide opportunities for people. The biggest thing you can give a person is the opportunity to go as far as they can. An organization like Gold Corp, it's creating that opportunity for a number of people and that's what drives me. 
Please welcome Ian Telfer, 2018 inductee as companion to the Order of the Canadian Business Hall of Fame.